really, we're just going to do a conversion here. But you're using this equation. Pressure is mass density times gravity times height, or weight density times height. The denser the object is, the, the material is, uh, for a certain amount of pressure difference, the uh, smaller it's going to raise it. If I use a, like oil, a fine oil, it's less dense than water, that same amount of pressure would have raised the water difference, I mean, would have raised the oil more than 680 millimeters. If I'd used mercury, which is like almost 14 times denser than water, it would have raised it 1 14th as much. So for this calculation, you just convert that change in height for the material to a pressure difference. So I'll say I've got got my U-tube. doesn't matter if they're not the same size. Even the width doesn't matter. It's just the height difference. And I've got my blue water in here. And I've got height difference right there. Um, I'll say this is H1, and I'll say that's zero, right, so you can read it. I'll call that H1. I'll say H1 is zero millimeters, and it matters not just the height, but also what we're using. We're using water. Zero millimeters of water. I'll call this H2, and I'll say that's 680 millimeters of water. Now, the first question will be, A, what's the pressure difference? And let's find it, uh, let's find it in PSI, pounds per square inch. In your textbook, you'll find a conversion for different uh, heights of material, uh, water and mercury mostly. So I need a working equation. I know that here's atmosphere. Here's the test. I push down. And I'm really, I need to have a positive or a negative in the test section. I know it's positive because I'm looking at one side. Atmosphere is pushing down. On the other side, I'm pushing down. And this side's lower, so I must be pushing harder. So the test section's pushing harder than the atmosphere side. It must be positive pressure. So my answer has to be positive. So instead of H1 minus H2, I'm going to say that the pressure difference is H2 minus H1. Use the palms and figure out what's positive and what's negative. And that's going to be, let's see, 680 millimeters of water. Oops, better start on the line. That's going to be equal to 680 millimeters of water minus zero millimeters of water. Now I could give the answer in millimeters of water. It would be 680 millimeters H2O, because I picked zero, smart of me. But I want it in PSI. And so I look at the back of the book and I, I find a conversion. Turns out, I believe that uh, one PSI, I need PSI on the top, is the same as about 703.1 millimeters of water. I think that's the right value. You'll want to check to make sure. Now, did I do it right? Sure, the uh, millimeters of water cancel out, and PSI is on top. So if I do the calculation, first, before I do the calculation, I look at the values. 680 is a little smaller than 703. It's going to be less than a PSI, maybe like uh, you know, 0.97 PSI. So I say 680 and divide it by 703.1 and I get uh, 0.967. So as well as I measured it to two significant figures, I get this is equal to equal to 0 0.97 PSI. Now this is a pressure difference. It's not an absolute pressure because I'm just measuring the difference between this pressure 
and that of atmosphere. So let's figure out what the atmospheric pressure would be. Call it B. It doesn't matter if you're using inches or millimeters or uh, mercury or water or anything. It's, it's just the height, the material, the density, and you look for the conversion. So B, what's the absolute pressure? Now the absolute pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure plus the gauge pressure, or delta P. That's 14.7 PSI, or pounds per square, well, I can just use PSI, because that's what the other one's in. 14.7 PSI, plus, and this is positive, positive pressure, 0 0.97 PSI. That's about 1 PSI to the nearest tenth. So that would be 15, see, 0.67. It would round up to 15.7 PSI. It would be a little bit higher. What happens if it's negative? Well, I've got this. Here's my atmospheric side again. Here's my test side. Notice that if I take air out of the system, uh, then it's not sucking. This side isn't sucking, it's just not pushing as hard. Well, now I'm going to have negative pressure because the atmospheric side is pushing harder than the test side. So, negative pressure. Now, I can't have negative absolute pressure, right? You can only, if you take all the molecules out of a room, that's it, that's all you can do. But I can have negative gauge pressure. How low can the negative gauge pressure go? It can go down to minus 14.7 PSI. Right here, it looks like I pulled out, uh, Looks like I've got about negative 680 millimeters of water this time, about the same height, just on the other side. In this case, the pressure, if, if it's the same as, uh, if it's 680 millimeters, it'd be minus 1 psi, or minus 0.97 psi, and the uh, absolute pressure would be 14.7 psi instead of plus 1 psi, it'd be minus 1 psi. So I'd have an absolute pressure of about 13.7 psi. So that's how a manometer works. That's how gauge pressure works. I'll repeat, gauge pressure is just the pressure difference between atmosphere and the pressure you're measuring. And absolute pressure is the sum of the pressures of atmospheric pressure, sea level pressure, and gauge pressure.